Hello, today I'm talking to Alyssa Kuhn. Alyssa is a physical therapist and arthritis specialist. I, I know I've spoken to several people that I was going to in interview her and people, oh, arthritis, yes, I've got arthritis. So people are really interested in, in hearing this. So thank you very much for finding the time to talk to me. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. I mean, we met via our Instagram feeds and I was um, really impressed by how you how much you were proposing that people with arthritis should exercise yes um, we're out there like, living it <laughs> yes. whereas most people go oh I've got arthritis I need to be careful I mustn't injure my joints um, and this is not the view you support at all no because, and I think one of the biggest things is when people hear the diagnosis of arthritis or have joint pain, you don't necessarily need a diagnosis, but, um, they just become fearful, like second guessing every exercise, like, is this good for my joints? Is this going to cause more damage? And then it leads to a path of inactivity. And I mean, we're not very active lately anyways. And so it's, I mean, figuring out how we can increase that activity and decrease that second guessing and make you more confident in exercise because people can really be fearful. And that's a very real thing. And um, just because there's a lot of myths about damage and what's good for your joints and what's not. And so I'm trying to kind of push that out there so people feel more confident being active. Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, I've seen you posting, putting posts up about, you know, if you've got knee arthritis, you can still walk and hike and things like that. Can you do and run? And run, yes. <laughs> but uh, presumably people maybe have, do they have to do it in a certain way? Do they need to do specific exercises? How does it need to be? And I actually just got a question about this yesterday, <clears throat> yesterday that someone is like, I have bone on bone arthritis. How can I do high impact activity and high impact activity is kind of one of the first that goes the first, one of the first things that you're essentially told not to do. Um, and you have to kind of adopt this low impact exercise the rest of your life, but people are getting diagnosed younger and younger and aren't taking that as, as lightly as maybe someone in, you know, their eighties, nineties would have. Yeah. And so Yes, it, there is a very specific way. And of course, it depends on your severity. And one of the biggest things that we definitely want to do is to prepare the joint. So we want to make sure that your joint can tolerate that. And it absolutely can. Um, cartilage actually really likes high impact activity and really likes strenuous exercise, but we just have to do it in the right way. Because one of the things, especially with knee arthritis in some hip and low back arthritis can be the same is we put stress on certain parts of the joint and that part gets overstressed. And that could be because muscle imbalance, some weaknesses, some asymmetries, that sort of thing. So essentially what we have to do is kind of get rid of those first, or at least get as symmetrical as we can that way, the entire joint now can support the high impact activity. And it's not just kind of that, like the inside of the knee is a very common place that people have pain and a common place that gets overloaded when we have weakness in certain muscles. And so we want to kind of normalize that first. And then I have a very specific kind of um, path that people go down and specific tests that people have to pass before we start doing any jumping, running. So we obviously make sure that you're ready for it. Um, but there is a very specific path because when done wrong, you can have more pain and more swelling. And then you're like, what the heck? I can't do this. And then you just kind of give up on all of it because yeah. it gets really frustrating. Um, so yes, there's a very specific path that we follow in order to get there, but it is possible. So, so the, you know, to start with, maybe is it specific exercises, as you say, to bring symmetry, maybe um, in terms of the knee, one muscle is stronger than another. So the muscle tends to fall, the, the knee tends to fall in or, or fall out. And, and what you're doing is to strengthen it. So it's the impact is throughout the knee joint. Is that how it works? 
Yes. So essentially, and most of the time when people have arthritis, um, one leg might be a little bit weaker than the other. So a lot of times it's not necessarily, you know, sometimes it's specific muscles, but a lot of times we just correct the global things first. So like if people try to do a, um, if you sit on the couch and extend one leg, keep the other leg bent and just try to stand up like essentially a supported single leg squat. There are some people that can do that on one side and then can't do it on the other. And balance also is a big one where we see kind of side to side differences, stand on one leg, stand on the other, and one might be harder. And so first we kind of go for these global things. Cause a lot of times arthritis, you may have it worse on one side than the other. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that leads to moving differently. That leads to kind of that fear again of using that. So then you start limping or you start kind of favoring the other side. Um, and so we correct kind of those global things first. And then we kind of get into more like isolated type things. But for the most part, if we can kind of correct some of these global things, then that kind of takes care of some of the other because we're kind of normalizing the way you're walking, normalizing the way you're moving. And that can kind of take care of some of those other things. Right. And so so do you give people exercises to do at home? Is that is that what happens? Yes. So I am all about exercising at home. I, as a physical therapist, I don't even have a clinic um, because I think it's super important that, I mean, it's great to go to the gym and it's great to do those things. And there is absolutely a time and a place, but for a lot of people that are just starting, that's a big hurdle to overcome. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that I, all the videos I take are in my own home or in other people's houses, um, because I think it's really important to feel empowered at home, to be able to to just do. And my biggest thing is like 10 to 15 minutes of exercise, at least to start. And so most of the workouts that we do in the beginning are in that time frame because I have a lot of people, like I have one woman who never really worked out. She was active, but never was on a workout regimen. And she's like, you know what? I'm really surprised. I don't dread doing this because it's only 10 to 15 minutes. And then I can go on about my day. It's not like get ready for the gym, go for an hour, come back. Shower. Like it's this whole routine. Yeah, yeah. And so it's very bite-sized pieces and very easily done in the home. Cause there's so many, so much cool equipment out there now, um, that you don't need like a full set of dumbbells. You can use TRX suspension straps. You can use kitchen counters. You can use kettlebells, like all of these things you can so easily do in the home. And so that is one of the things. So we don't have that barrier of getting to the gym of all of that that goes with it. Um, but then of course, I mean, to get more strength in things, the gym absolutely um, has its time and place. But um, for the most part, I do everything in homes. I even go to clients' homes too. Um, so you can yeah. see kind of yeah. a little bit better about what they're working with and everything like that. And, and do you get people who, you know, you, you, you explain all of this and give them their what they're going to do and and who just are too apprehensive to do it even though even though you've explained it all sometimes it is an uphill battle and that is not necessarily on the person because the hard thing about arthritis is it's not necessarily like a linear progression of improvement we kind of have these ups and downs. And sometimes we have flare ups, sometimes certain exercises actually cause more pain and it's more of a trial and error type thing. And so mm -hmm. we always talk about that before, because I always say it's so important to exercise your mind before your body, because so often we just go right to trying all these special exercises that our friends or family, or even some doctors tell us, but if we don't really understand why we're doing it, then we're kind of missing that step. Or if we also don't understand what to expect. Yeah. So exercises are not necessarily going to be pain-free. Some discomfort is okay. Um, but it's kind of starting out with those exercises that are going to be nicer to the joints. And that is very dependent on everyone. Um, some people have higher pain, more severe arthritis, and that takes a little bit more consideration than people that um, have a little bit less severe or catching it a little bit earlier. And so the biggest thing with buy-in on that and to kind of decrease that apprehension is one, just kind of explaining that pain doesn't necessarily correlate with damage. Um, and that's a big thing. We talk a lot about pain science and 
all that kind of stuff. Um, because that really helps with um, buy-in. People are much more willing to do something once they kind of understand what to expect. Because arthritis can be very mysterious. It can be very weird. Pain is weird. And so once we kind of um, decipher that a little bit, then people are much more apt. I mean, when I tell someone to jump, I mean, I get an initial hesitation, like what <laughs> I haven't <laughs> jumped in years or tell them that, you know, we're going to get to running. People are very apprehensive about that, but when they start like actually squatting with weight and feeling good about it and start doing these things, then those things become a lot easier. Um, so it's all just about kind of, and that's the hard part about because because sometimes when people go to physical therapy or they go to a personal trainer or something, um, and they just start immediately with all of these exercises and trying all these things, they leave with more pain, more swelling, then that absolutely becomes more apprehensive. But with arthritis, it's kind of all about kind of that initial giving you the confidence, giving you the knowledge you need to exercise your mind before your body. And that's where we see kind of the possibilities unlock. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess, I mean, if people go to the gym, when you go to the gym, you don't think, oh, I'll do 10 to 15 minutes and then I'll go home again exactly. because, you know, I've come on, I've got my gym gear on, you know, I've, I've psyched myself up. I got to the gym, you know, I need to spend at least an hour here, um, right. which may not be appropriate, at least initially for somebody with arthritis. Whereas if they're working out from home, then it seems much more, okay to just do 10 or 15 minutes of workout yeah and absolutely i mean there are modifications for everything i mean if you wanted like if you came to me and you were like you know what i have arthritis pain i really need to get working out and maybe you had a history of working out in the gym we can absolutely make the gym work yeah um but I just find, a, especially a lot of the people dealing with arthritis, they've kind of given up on exercise for the past few years. Um, and so the goal may be to get back to the gym, but for the most part, I mean, working out at home has become much more normalized now. And so yeah. people are like, oh, wow, we can actually, you know, do these things at <coughs> home. We don't necessarily have to go to the gym. And so working out at home is more attractive because then you don't have to go there and, you know, um, so it's absolutely modifiable to what you need but for the most part a lot of people find that kind of 10-15 minutes as being very attractive and most of the time they're active doing other things too um, because obviously we want to you know get as much activity as we can without flaring up pain or swelling but um, most of the time people are also like hiking walking supplementing things and so that is kind of a big thing too walking is one of the most common forms of exercise when you have arthritis, but just adding that 10 to 15 minutes in before you can get so much more benefit from just walking, um, just adding these short kind of bursts in between or before or after. Um, so it just makes it much easier because the biggest thing is adherence. We don't want people to give up. We want people to get into this consistent routine because without consistency, you're not going to see results. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that is one of the biggest things that I have found that people are more consistent when it's much more doable, especially traveling. I have a lot of people that travel and they take their band, they take their TRX strap and they still work out on vacation for the most part, but they still <laughs> get in the 10 to 15 minutes. And that's, what's so great about it. It's just very versatile. And that is kind of, I think one of the most important things, because if I'm giving you something that you need all this equipment for, adherence kind of lacks especially yeah. you know yeah. the chin and things come up and things like that do, do you find at all that people meet resistance from other people um i remember i was showing um a, uh, one of my gym videos to a friend and he got incredibly agitated and was going <laughs> you mustn't do this you mustn't do this and i went why not and he went you will injure yourself you will injure your back and i went no yeah. well, this is actually strengthening my back Exactly. And he was really agitated. Especially like when you're lifting weights and things, people can get really, because it's all of that, those myths out there about, yeah. you know, you're going to bending your back, doing a deadlift is not good. And, you know, all of these things. Um, I don't necessarily meet any resistance from the actual people that I'm working with um, because 
we do like specific tests to make sure like, okay, you can do this specific test. So now we can jump. And so yeah. people are much more willing to kind of try that. Um, but some, I meet resistance, of course, online, um, posting things that, and it, not necessarily bad resistance, but posting, you know, people running with knee arthritis and people are like, oh my goodness, I didn't think that, you know, I could do that. I was told I shouldn't do that. And so people are like, oh, that's possible. Well, how is that possible? And so I get kind of some questions that way, but I think one of the biggest things is actually showing people doing them versus showing myself doing them, I think can be very empowering mm -hmm. because, you know, people who, you know, think running is impossible or think like squatting with a 35 pound kettlebell when you have like spinal stenosis and things like that. People are like, oh my goodness, I don't think I could ever do that. That's bad for your back. But actually showing somebody doing it and showing kind of the journey, I think is kind of, it kind of helps with that sort of thing that it is possible, you know, with hard work and dedication and things like that. But um, surprisingly, I don't necessarily meet a ton of resistance. And I think it's from like actually showing clients and I think yeah. the biggest thing with you is just showing that you can do it and people are like sitting you know in their 60s 70s 80s and it's like oh wow like maybe I could do that and it's really actually empowering so I can take a little bit of the resistance yes. uh, if it gets somebody like off the couch or at least thinking like oh maybe I can do more than I'm doing currently and so that's the biggest thing um but I I really haven't met a ton. And like I said, I think it's just from showing real people doing these things. Yeah. And it's not like we're going out doing marathons or, you know, lifting a bunch of heavy weights on barbells, which I think that could absolutely be possible. Um, but we are still doing like home-based things, which are typically a little bit less intense, but still, I mean, I had one woman yesterday running forwards, backwards, jumping on stairs. And so, and she has knee arthritis. And so I think that that kind of helps kind of spark people's minds um, and yeah. that it's more of a positive reaction than a negative one. What, what sort of, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you get a great deal of satisfaction from lots of different clients and their, how they they're improve, how much they improve and things, but uh, are there any particularly that people that stand out in your mind as particularly satisfying or good the way, the way things have changed for them? Yeah. So I actually have two people I've been working with for a long time. Um, one of them, um, he had spinal stenosis. He had some starting of knee arthritis, hadn't worked out in a long time, um, had gained some unwanted weight, all of that. And finally was just like, you know what? I want to make a change. And we started very, very, he kept getting back spasms and we started very, very light support with everything, very controlled movements. And it has been amazing. The transformation that he has made now he owns a 25 pound kettlebell, a 15 pound kettlebell, some weights, some TRX suspension straps. He has worked out almost every day with rest days, um, for the past like six months. Now he's goblet squatting with that 25 pound. And I think he has a 35 to, um, kettlebell swings. And it's not necessarily just the physical, like, oh, I can swing a 35 pound kettlebell. But it's the fact that now, and he's messaged me before he's gone to top golf and was able to swing a golf club without second guessing or anticipating that back spasm. He has gone hiking with his family in California, which used to be very anxiety um, causing because he wasn't unsure or he was unsure if he was going to be able to go, but now can go up and down, no problem. And so it's just opening all these doors. He can climb the stairs without huffing and puffing. And so it's definitely made some really big life changes, even getting dressed without pain or having that back spasm. I mean, a lot of times it's just the little things that make it mm. so much easier. Um, and so he's one of them. I post about him all the time um, because I think it really is inspiring, but not discounting that he's done a lot of work on his end. Um, and that is the biggest thing is just consistency. Um, mm. But he has done absolutely amazing and now doesn't even have to deal with pain. Sometimes pain 
relief, like total pain relief, isn't necessarily the goal because sometimes it's hard with arthritis. Um, but it's making sure it's not limiting you making sure that it's tolerable. I have one woman who was afraid to do anything that uh, triggered any sort of pain, even a little bit of discomfort, but now her mindset is totally shift. And she is like, you know what? Anytime I experience discomfort, I just kind of ignore her. I don't even really pay attention to it. And that is a big thing that opens a lot of doors because then then we don't, we're more apt to do things. We keep moving, which is so much better. And so that is another woman I've been working with for a long time. She's been running after knee arthritis and finally ran her first mile. And so, um, we've, I've had so many, um, people that have done amazing things. And there are some people who, you know, things don't work and it's, we have to kind of look at other options. So it's not necessarily all butterflies and rainbows, but we can at least get you to the point that, you know, you can actually accomplish some things that you never thought you would have been able to. So I've had, I've had lots of inspiring people, um, that definitely put in the work and see the results. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think you said once before, when, when you and I had a chat, you were, you were talking about research where, looking at uh people's spines and um the state of the spine doesn't necessarily correlate with the amount of pain the person is experiencing can can you tell us just a bit more about that yeah so with arthritis and um degenerative disc disease spinal stenosis all of these kind of um degenerative chronic conditions, we focus a lot on x-rays. We focus a lot on MRIs. People, whenever I see people, the first thing they want to do is show me their x-ray or show me their MRI. But there's been some really cool studies um, on imaging that they've taken in various circumstances, but essentially one of the knee arthritis um, studies, and they've actually kind of done the same thing with low backs, is they take a bunch of people and they take x-rays or MRIs of their back or knee. And then they ask who has pain and who doesn't. And what's really interesting is that the two people can have almost the identical x-rays or MRIs of their knee or back. And one person can have debilitating pain and the other person can have no pain. And so then that's what's kind of triggered people into thinking, okay, well, arthritis is more than just bone on bone. It's more than just wear and tear. It's more than just the physical appearance of it. And so that's when we've kind of started delving into inflammation, um, all sorts of things that can actually cause pain. Cause it's like, okay, well, they look the same. Why does one person have pain and one person doesn't? Well, maybe the person that has pain has, you know, maybe diabetes, they have another chronic condition, or they've been dealing with a lot of stress recently, or they've been eating a lot of inflammatory foods, or they've been not necessarily very active where this person has been really active. Um, and so there are so many other factors that go into, but we think about, and we see this x-ray and I have people that come to me and they're like, you know what, I think I'm going to get an x-ray just so I can see what's going on. When in reality, when we see what's going on, we see that degeneration, we see that joint space narrowing, we see these things and it's like, oh, wow, I think it's worse than I thought. And that is what we don't want because then we start to play with our mind a little bit and it's like, oh, well, this is worse than I thought. And then it starts to kind of um, affect how we do things. And so I always kind of advise against imaging unless you've had an injury or a significant increase in pain or anything like that, but it can really kind of play with us a little bit. So, and that doesn't tell the whole story because these two people can have the same x-ray, the same findings, joint space, narrowing, degeneration, but one can have pain and one can be totally fine. And even bone on bone, even when people are bone on bone, these one can have pain and one doesn't necessarily have to. Mm. And People think and hear bone on bone or they hear these things and it's like, oh, wow, I should really have pain because of this. And it kind of spirals into, you know, all of this, all of this yeah. negative thinking. And so and, and therefore le- and less activity, less moving around, being more the, tense. So it becomes a whole cycle. circle, doesn't it? It, absolutely. And pain can be very, very, it can wreak havoc on our entire lives without us even knowing it. We become more irritable. We become more stressed. We become 
all of these different things. And so it can definitely play a negative role if we look at our x-ray or MRI and see things that we're not really sure about or we're confused about or that look on the x-ray different. But I actually really like, I've been delving into some pain science recently and I cannot remember who said this, but um, he was talking about um, pain and imaging and was like, degeneration is just wrinkles on the inside. So everybody gets wrinkles, everybody gets degeneration. It's just what we do with it and how our body perceives it. And so I thought that was kind of interesting um, Mm -hmm. because every, it happens, our joints just age like our skin does and like our body does, but because we have wrinkles, we don't necessarily have pain. And so having these wrinkles on the inside is kind of a different way to look at it, um, which I thought was kind of interesting. So um, it's normal and, but people see x-rays and then go right to surgery. And so that's kind of where we're trying to kind of stop and stop people from, you know, going right to those premature surgeries. Mm. A real, a real measure of me- message of hope I mean not only a message I mean it's not just some airy fairy message of hope I mean I know you're really well researched and have a lot of experience experience of this so it's not oh don't worry about it you know you can still work out if you have arthritis or something very vague it's very specific and things if people wanted to know more about you you've got a website yeah which it was yeah what's the address of your website Alyssa Keep the adventure alive dot com. Love a, a lovely name for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, or you can go to YouTube as well. Um, you can search my name, Dr. Alyssa Kewen, or if you search Keep the Adventure Alive, it should come up as well. Um, lots of tips and tricks. And one of the things about hope is that um like I said, it's not necessarily butterflies and rainbows that like, if we work together, you can do all this magical things. I mean, you can, but it does take hard work and it does take, we do have those ebbs and flows. It's not perfect all the time, but it's just having someone or having that confidence to know like, this is normal. This is okay. And we can continue. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that is yeah, absolutely important. And so, so do you, um, do you take clients over zoom? Or do they, or do they have to be physically there? So I can do physically there. So I'm in Utah. Um, I can do virtual. So I actually just met someone in the UK last week um, and we did a virtual call. Um, I'm also launching a really exciting online course because I want to be able to kind of reach the masses. And so that's the arthritis adventure blueprint. That's going to be released in the next couple of weeks. Um, So I have lots of options. So um, the personal one-on-one is definitely much more of an investment and the arthritis adventure blueprint is going to kind of be a stepping stone to kind of teach a lot of this kind of stuff off the bat. So that way, if we do work together, we can kind of get right into it. Um, And so that is kind of it. That is a, an option that will be released soon. Okay. And yes, we have your book. (laughs) move well age well I love what you say on the book on the back because it says this book is designed to give you the key steps towards achieving success with mindset memory exercise osteoarthritis and balance these are all common things that can be affected by increasing age but you don't have to let them hold you back from doing the things you love and that's where the keeping the adventure alive comes from isn't it that people give up on all the adventurous things they did because yes. they have arthritis which is um, why <laughs> yeah. adventure doesn't have an age limit it doesn't I mean we see people like that are 60 70 80 out on the hiking trails at one of the ski places if you're over 80 and skiing it's free so it's like oh, right. people are yeah people are like very adventurous and so but a lot of times in our culture now, we tend to give up on all these things because we think pain is normal and all of this decline is normal and it's not. Um, and so even at 50, 60, I mean, you just can't start giving up on things. Um, we have some of these speed bumps, whether it's arthritis or another condition, and we just have to kind of work through those speed bumps. And they're just kind of an obstacle, not necessarily a death sentence to everything that you love. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. That's a really interesting, optimistic, a joyful. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
that's the goal. We're creating a positive environment and optimism and hope because there's not enough of it out there. That's right. That's right. Thank you so much. Absolutely. I really enjoyed talking to you. Yes, thank you.